Life and glad to be a Rotarian, yes or no? Yes! John Germ, past president of Rotary International says, you had a chance to say no when somebody asked you to join Rotary. That was the last chance you could say no. <laughs> We're really glad you're here today. We have a fantastic event for you. It's so nice to be in front of 60,000 people today. <laughs> seated in the aisle row of the airplane, playing the game you often play on airplanes, and I wonder who's sitting next to me today. Have you ever played that game? And a beautiful woman got on the plane. She started to walk down the aisle, and I thought, I wonder if it's her. Nope. And then a supersized guy gets on the plane, and I thought, I wonder if it's him. Nope. And then I heard my seatmate before I saw him. You know, people are funny on cell phones, they talk extra loud. Why, is, why do people do this? I used to be annoyed by this way, people talking you know, extra loud on their cell phones. And then I learned you could, you could get a lot of personal information about people by just listening to their calls. You know, if they don't mind, I don't mind. He got to my chair and it's interesting, he, uh, he, because he's on the phone, he kind of grunted at me, you know, first impression, he kind of grunted at me. And I knew immediately he need, he'd need to stand up. While I'm standing up, he's pushing a bag into the overhead bin. He gets in next to me, he shoves another bag under the seat. Both bags have a luggage tag from a Michigan manufacturer, a name I recognize. I think I might know where this gentleman works. He's saying goodbye to a child that does not want to say goodbye to daddy. And then a second child that does not want to say goodbye to daddy. And then a third child who is screaming so loudly into the phone, I can hear the kid from my seat. I don't have any children, but I feel for this gentleman. The flight attendant announces that they have to close the boarding doors. All everybody has to get off their phone. And I hear the gentleman saying to his son, please don't cry. Daddy will be home soon. Please don't cry. He's trying to console his young son. And he has to hang up on his son. And I felt really bad for him. When he hung up, he sighed as if the weight of the world was leaving his shoulders. And I turned to him and I said, Daddy's leaving home, huh? And he said, oh, you were listening. <laughs> I said, how could I not? I said, how many kids do you have? He says, three. I said, what are their names? He says, Sally, Scotty, and Sandy. Scotty's the youngest, uh, youngest one. He was the one that was crying the loudest. And I said, I feel bad. What ages? He says, five, six, and seven. I said, wow, we. I said, what do you do when you're traveling like this? He says, well, I'm a sales manager at my job. I said, how often do you have to travel? He says, I'm often gone 15, 17 days a month. I said, with three kids, wow. I'll bet they don't like to see daddy leave. He says, no, they do not. I said, uh, why do you travel so much? You know, you could do Zoom video meetings. You could, you could check in with people, you know, uh, from home, from the home office. He said, you know, uh, my people, my people uh, like me to visit with them. I, I need to make sure they're working a full day. I said, okay, very good. All of a sudden, he got a strange expression on his face. He kind of torqued up like this. He looked at me and he said, I'm sorry, he said, I didn't get your name. It was an interesting expression based on what he said. Have you ever looked at verbal signals and tried to match them with nonverbal signals when you meet somebody? I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Like, he didn't look pleased about this, you know. But the reason his face is all screwed up is because he's realized he's now given me a lot of personal information. He's told me the names and ages of his three children. He told me where he works, what he does for a living, and his biggest problem at work. And he knows nothing about me. It's time to play catch up. So he said, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. And I turned to him and I said, I uh, held out my hand first, because I know the person who hands out, hands out, uh, push out his hand first has influence in any interaction. And so I held out my hand and I said, my name is Michelangelo Caruso. Now my name by itself is an elevator speech. <laughs> he starts to shake my hand. He says, Michelangelo Caruso. He says, that's a fantastic name. He says, what do you do for a living? And I said, well, I help sales managers get their people to work for their <laughs> He starts shaking my hand. He says, do you have a car? <laughs> and the lady in front of him, in front of us says, I want one too. <laughs> I tell you this story because first impressions are really important, aren't they? 